There we go. Hi, everybody. Nice to be here. Uh, welcome back. My name is Dean. I got bed head today. Didn't even bother showering. It's just one of those days. One of you get started early and you're like, I'll get to a shower. And then you don't get to a shower. And then you're like, I still got bed head. And then you're like, oh, I got a podcast that tens of thousands of people watch and listen to. You might as well just kind of bomb it with bed head. Because what does it matter, right? I'm not here to look good. You're not looking at this because I'm good looking. You're just here because I've got my friend Charlie with me today. Charles Adler, ladies and gentlemen, from the Charles Adler podcast. Hey, dude. How are you? I, I sleep on a bed of nails. <laughs> Because, because, because my favorite show, the yeah. old days. Yeah. Oftentimes, I'm talking to Warren Kinsella, who likes likes to talk about who he worked for 40 years ago. So I'm going to do yeah. a Warren Kinsella here. <laughs> going to give it to him when he's yeah. not here. No, yeah. Well, you know, like I'm a, I'm a Canadian kid. Uh, you know, I, I I stick the knives where they belong in a person's back when they're not so, around. That's the easiest yeah. time to do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Here here <laughs> here comes the machete. Anyway, um, so. Um, one of my favorite shows when I was a kid was the Adams family mm. and the Adams family. Um, they were just, they were just a, a barrel of laughs. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dwell on it because I realize it's, it dates us. You know, you were, you no, dude, dude, no that doesn't play in podcast world. Like, you know, in radio, they used to tell you all the time, uh, don't no references from, uh, more than five <laughs> years ago. You'll sound dated. Remember that whole thing? Or it's like, I never tell everybody <laughs> how old you are either. We don't want people to know how old. All you right. Are. So and you're like, no, you can say Adam's family. It's still relevant. So full, full disclosure. Okay? Yes. I'm a professional. Yes, you are. If I honestly believed that the anecdotes I offer and the examples I deliver don't work, I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not here to pretend to be able to pitch a major league fastball. I can throw it. I so know. here it is. Uncle Festus, look it up, folks. Yep. Go on YouTube if you've never seen it. Uncle Festus was the funniest character in the Adams family, and Uncle Festus slept on a bed of nails. You know why he did that? To train himself to go through the war of life as Uncle Fester. That's yeah, what he did. That's that's that that's what gives that's you why discipline. He did it. Yeah. And as Francis Coppola, who owns some vineyards in California, and apparently. Did some movies that are, you know, very forgettable, like The Godfather. Not a bad movie. Francis <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola was asked when he was uh, doing uh, one of my favorite movies of all time, Apocalypse Now, and he had a bunch of uh, young actors and actresses who became superstars. And he was asked, uh, "Where do you where do you find this talent?" And Francis Coppola said something that applies to everyone, regardless of their profession. He said, "Talent is everywhere." Disciplined talent is rare. Mm, mm. Uh, and that would be you, and I would put myself in that category too. However, only because you're there. Well, the bed Just of nails. Put myself next to you. The bed of nails, because I, 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 you know, I, I, I'm actually coherent, and uh, so all of this ties in. The bed of nails is what gives me the discipline yeah. that I possess. It's all well, about the nails. Okay. <laughs> well, you. <laughs> You are nails. You have to be now. You know, it's funny because I remember last time you did your podcast with Kinsell. I was lucky enough to be there. And he's he's of this like consistency that I it just I look at and I'm like, I don't know how you guys do it. You're of that consistency, too. Right there. You need to have a certain skin to be able to be in like political conversations in 2024 because you, you, there's this new wrinkle that's been introduced. It's idiocy. Right. Is that. You know, we used to look at po politicians and politics and go, oh, A plus B equals C. We live in a time where none of that actually matters anymore. And I am confused. Everybody's frustrated. And we've even on our podcast taken a step back from the politics of the world because it's just like, this is crazy. Like, I don't even know who takes any of these fucking people seriously anymore. Pardon my language. Yeah. But I, I want to bring up a couple of examples because we've seen it over the past couple of days. I need you to explain some things to me. Um, and the reason why is because you've been in this game for a long time. And I was thinking about you last night because I'm like, man, I'm spent. I can't even pay attention to the negativity. Like you will follow a guy like Pierre Pauly ever around. And you're like, basically, the world's ending if you go to any one of these rallies. And if you believe any of the memes and if you look at anything he puts out, it's like, I guess we should all just go and huddle in a barn somewhere and light it on fire. That's the kind of politics he's into. Right. And that so I'm like, I'm, it's dirgy. 
I'm tired. I'm exhausted by it. So I've just taken a laughing and I need to understand it now, which is why I need to ask you some questions because I've seen some things over the past couple of days. I'm like, are we not aware enough to be able to see what this is? Like, are you we gotta not remember, aware you gotta remember that You got to remember that he's targeting his base and his base are incels. Incels are people who make love to inanimate objects mm-hmm. and the inanimate Pierre Polyev, that, that one gear that he does, uh, mm-hmm. anger, rage, dour, mm, world is ending. You know, mm-hmm. that stuff, that, uh, that appeals to people who aren't getting any love. I mean, uh, I'm not trying to make fun of these guys, except that their problem has nothing to do with Justin Trudeau. Yeah. They're nothing, they're, 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 their problem isn't about the price of blueberries. It's their berries. Yeah. Their berries aren't having any fun. I'm sorry. But it's got nothing to do with politics. But, of course, Pierre Polyev finds them because there are many of them around and they love going to these rallies. And, you know, what's crazy to me about so much of the the herd of punditry, these predictable people who just kind of drink each other's bathwater and keep repeating the same old, same old, oh, conservatives demand a lot of anger and rage. I'm a small C conservative. I've been a small C conservative ever since... Bill Davis was the premier of Ontario. Yeah. Talk about dating. You know, we talked about uh, decades ago, Duff Roblin was premier of uh, Manitoba and Peter Lougheed was premier. Anyway, these are, my, these are my elders. These are the people who gave me my, my, I guess, my political worldview. And what's my political worldview? It's really simple. Canada, to be Canada, needs a very, very excellent social safety net. We want to take care of people who need help. And the only mm-hmm. way to have a strong social safety net is to be fiscally responsible. Okay. Mm-hmm. So those those are the two things. That's what made progressive conservatism. That's where I come from. I don't come from a conservatism that finds some group, targets that group, and is angry with that group all day, or finds a prime minister and decides that everybody and everything that matters uh, to people that isn't going well is all about the prime minister. That's junk. It's for junkyard dogs. And, of course, a lot of people are turned off by that because it doesn't apply to their real world. Many people who go and and, and want to buy the the basket of uh, strawberries or the bag of coffee know that the reason that price is higher isn't about the carbon tax. Mm. It's not about the carbon tax. It's because of this thing called worldwide inflation. And when they keep hearing someone do axe attacks, axe attacks, axe attacks, it's it's high school. Well... Can I, I want to ask you a question because I need to understand some of that. We talk about punditry. Let's park that because I want to deal with that in a second because this is, this is a, I, I think it's an open secret yeah. in politics as to who carries who's mail and who gets paid for it. And I want to park that in just a second. But I want to get to the carbon taxing because I think it's the most boring fucking conversation <laughs> in the world. And I'll tell you why. Because it's like literally catnip for morons who don't understand economics who don't understand social programs who don't give a shit about the, the economy who don't give a shit about their own back a uh, bank book literally if you don't understand this and if you're railing against it at this point specifically in certain provinces you have a like an intake problem you've got like an iq issue you know you've got a horsepower problem and i'll point out why this carbon tax here in canada to fill everybody in is a price on pollution we get a rebate for it, so we get taxed on the front end, and then at the end of the year, all Canadians who earn under $200,000 get a rebate for it, and it is more than what you pay in, so you actually benefit and make money. The top 20% businesses, people who make over $300,000 in and around that amount, probably are not going to see a rebate, and no one's too unhappy about it because <laughs> everybody here is just as poor as you are around the world, so you got the top 20% that are arguing about it. Now, that top 20%, are the richest 20% and the biggest businesses in Canada. And they also happen to be donors and friends of this conservative axe the tax movement, which is going around the country. Okay, so when you see these protests, it is not about you. They're telling you it's about you. It's about Galen Weston. It's about corporate greed. It's about trying to protect big money and big donors from this tax, which is going to pinch rich people and big business. It will, specifically manufacturing, gas, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just park that for a second. There are several provinces who are fighting against this, including mine, which has the cancel cap and trade here. So the reason, and, and that is why we have a carbon tax. And the same people that instituted the carbon tax in this province are the same people who are going, 
We're never going to have one. Well, we already have one. So we have a stupid person problem that is rampaging across the country. And in Saskatchewan, it manifested itself today. And I want to get your opinion on this because I think it's absolutely hilarious and also a really telling problem for the issue we have in Canada when it comes to the upstairs stuff. Scott Moe, he's the premier of Saskatchewan, railed against the carbon tax. We're not going to be doing a carbon tax. We're not doing it. The government's trying to steal from people in Saskatchewan yesterday. The Premier of Saskatchewan, you know this gentleman, Scott Moe, introduced his own carbon tax with no rebate to replace the federal tax that he hated, which he said was going to cost his taxpayers all kinds of money, and he was fighting for them. That comes with a rebate. He basically owned the libs on the back of all the people he swore an oath to protect, and I find that un believable charlie how does that work well he's he's punishing his own people two ways one he misinforms them about the federal carbon tax and two he imposes a provincial carbon tax with no rebate so he essentially is making more money for the saskatchewan treasury by lying to his taxpayers and punishing them than he would if he just stopped lying and stopped pretending that justin trudeau is the devil but but this kind of this kind of politics actually works. Scott Moe is, I guess, one of the, relatively speaking, one of the more popular premiers in the country, because he's talking the language of the folks. He's talking the language of the angry folks. And as long as those folks keep staying angry with 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 Justin Trudeau, believing that Scott Moe is defending them from Justin Trudeau, as long as they believe that stuff, Scott Moe can pick their pockets all day long. Hmm. Um, what does that say? <laughs> what does that say about the people of Saskatchewan? <laughs> well, it's not about, it, you know, uh, we, we can talk about the people of Saskatchewan, the people of any other province, a relatively small percentage of the people in any of these provinces are paying a whole lot of attention. And the best way to determine that is just to go into the living rooms and bedrooms and phones and TVs of people, whether they're in Saskatchewan or elsewhere. Most of them, most of the time, and this includes people who are listening to podcasts, are not listening to podcasts about politics. They're not watching TV no, shows. Sick of it like you and I are, dude. Like that's the yeah. thing is that everybody is so tired of being told what to believe and what to think and who's right and who's wrong. But that gentleman and, and a several other uh, premiers around this province and uh, Pierre Polyev, uh, the moron in chief of the conservative movement in this country. Um, have spent millions and millions and millions of dollars forcing people to believe something that isn't true. And then after they forced them to believe something that wasn't true about the federal carbon tax, they then said, not only are, are they lying to you, we're going to take that money from you instead, and we're not going to give you anything, and you're going to be okay with it. And nobody's saying anything. There isn't one. And here's the thing. No. There isn't one Axe the Tax Saskatchewan rally. I haven't seen it. Not one. So the hypocrisy when you're seeing that premier, right, yeah. support these acts, the tax rallies that his federal counterpart has been ginning up across this country. Sorry, I almost swore there again. No. Ginning up across this country. Am I to believe then in that hypocrisy? Tell me how this works. No. Am I to believe then in that hypocrisy that those acts, the tax rallies is the same thing. No rebate. No one's getting money back. He just stole. He lied and stole. It's right. open. It's public. We see it. I, am I to believe that these acts, the tax rallies are legitimate? They have to be fake at this point because both taxes are the same amount. One yeah. doesn't have a rebate. And I haven't seen anybody scream and yell about it. Are they all full of shit? Well, they, but the thing is that how many people are these rallies attracting? So he goes to a rally and he, you know, packs, packs the place with 100 or 200, or 300 people. Who cares? On any of those nights, there are far more people bowling. There are far more people at the average Galen Weston store. I mean, I you know I realize that you know it's, it's the easiest media in the world. You know, send a reporter and a camera person to a rally, do a tight shot. You know, make sure that the, the folks watching TV don't know how tiny these things are, how insignificant they are. And the only reason I'm okay with talking about politics is because we can talk about politics, you and me, or you can sell and me in any reverent way. Yeah. But you know, I, I, I can't I can't do one of those shows where everybody on the on the show on the you know is is plea fighting. You know, you got the conservative lobbyist and the 
liberal lobbyist and the NDP lobbyist pretending that they're having an honest Canadian discussion with all the lobby jargon. You know, people tune it out. Some people in Ottawa watch, others don't. If someone was forcing me to play that game, I wouldn't play for one simple reason. People don't care. Mm. Pe people, people don't even know why they don't care. It's just boring. So, you know, th there you go. But, I mean, it would be really boring for me to sit here and analyze the quality of the rally, the quality of 200. Well, I'm not, I'm, but together. here's the thing. I'm not even yeah. saying that it's a quality rally. I'm yeah. saying it's got to be a, an absolute total put on, like a work, like a play, like are they hiring people? Because, dude, like we're watching this guy go across the country on an ax the tax bus yeah. and give people ax the tax placards tell pe tell everybody that this this Trudeau government is just out stealing from you at this point you're going to die you're going to you're going to be put in a blender there's going to be a shark nato <laughs> right. uh, look out uh, everybody he's but coming for you with this tax yeah, yeah but but, there, yeah, but, hand, but then he's then then the one of the guys that he colludes with to get yeah. these rallies going across the country Scott Mo is like yeah ax the tax and he's like by the way I'm going to absolutely screw everybody in this province with it's the exact same tax and zero rebate. But yeah, let's uh, let's ask taxes. So my point is this. There I haven't seen an ax the tax Saskatchewan rally. Right. Not once. I haven't seen anybody speak out about it. I haven't seen any of the conservative people that are putting on these big rallies go, hey, that's bad, too. That's wrong, too. Because if one tax is wrong, they all got to be wrong. Right. And yeah. you're seeing this selective outrage about dumb shit. So my point is this. I have a firm opinion. I, I and I'm not going to say this like this is what's happening, but this has got to be what's happening. Mm -hmm. None of those people at those rallies are real. They can't be. Well, it's, it's not about them not being real. It's just that every market, it doesn't matter whether it's Ontario or Saskatchewan, you can always find some people who are members and call them activists if you like, uh, call them groupies. It doesn't matter to me. They're they're members of the party and they show up, but they don't represent the mass of population. All those other people who are bowling or, or shooting pool or, or in a restaurant or at home watching TV, streaming Netflix or whatever, they, they, don't, they don't care. They're not engaged by it. And they don't believe that the 200 members of a particular party that show up at a rally yeah. are, 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 are creating anything significant for them. So it's, you know, it's showtime for people whose hobby, hobby is politics. But when we talk about swing voters, swing voters – don't swing into action until the last couple of weeks of a political campaign. Yeah. So for people who want to spend all of their time taking politics seriously every day for an entire four-year cycle, you know, we have elections about every four years, you know, they're spending a whole lot of time, a whole lot of juice, a whole lot of phoniness on something that most people really don't care about. But I just want to remind people, when you see people at rallies, they're members of the party. They're regulars. They're no different than Shriners or Rotarians or other people who are members of various clubs. You know, yeah. there are cities in the United States. Okay, I lived in Boston, and when you live in uh, you live in Boston, you realize very quickly that there's a very limited amount of hockey fans. But the fans who are hockey fans, they do show up, and they show up at the arena. And so on TV, you have an arena that is packed. If you have, if you don't know anything about Boston, you just assume, oh, everyone in Boston must be a Boston Bruin fan. Not so. Yes, in, in a place like Toronto, many people who can't afford uh, to go to the arena do watch the games on TV, and many talk about hockey all the time. Mm -hmm. But that's Toronto, Ontario, Canada. The only thing I'm trying to say here is you cannot confuse yourself as a Canadian by thinking that if a couple hundred people show up at a rally in Peterborough or, or Toronto or Lethbridge or, 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 you know, Kelowna, mm -hmm. it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really mean anything. You've got, you've got a certain amount of people who are members of, of the party in any given community, the party members show up. So what? 99% of the people in the community don't care. Theater. Yeah. It's theater for a very small group of people. It's uh, for sound bites. Speaking of which it works.
Um, Pierre Polyev lost some ground and some polling. I don't really give a shit about polling right now, but uh, it had a big lead, not so big anymore, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, and we're seeing now a whole bunch of stuff come out about him, uh, which is making me laugh. You're seeing the Chinese interference thing. That was a big problem. Aaron O'Toole the other day comes out and he's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'd still be leader if it weren't for Chinese interference. And everybody's like, what? <laughs> and now that's a big hot move. We also know about Pierre Polyev. And Modi and this this foreign interference thing is gonna it's percolating. Let's just let's just sit back and relax. And I think something's coming up, and I know what's coming up, but I'm not gonna say it because I'm gonna wait for it like everybody else. However, he's <laughs> the full court press of like trying to get anybody to talk about Pierre Polyev in a positive way is coming from the most likely of sources. Uh, Elon Musk showed his support for Pierre Polyev the other day. Joe Rogan has shown his support for Pierre yeah. Polyev recently. And yesterday's piece de resistance when it comes to like an endorsement from anybody in the world. He got a sweet endorsement from Alex Jones from InfoWars yesterday yeah. uh, where he said, quote, been following this guy for years and he's the oh, real yeah. deal. Oh, yeah, Canada desperately bad. needs a lot more leaders like him. So does the rest of the world. Keep in mind, he this guy helped organize January 6th. We can talk about Sandy Hook. He's also a self-avowed racist, and he's also the worst person in the world and a walking form of human cancer. So let me just bring this up. Yeah, that's not going to help Mr. Polyev in the I long run, is it? I, I don't. I don't think so. But I don't. I don't think Alex Jones cares about a pair Polyev any more than he cares about the ninety-nine percent of the human race. I guess he read the, you know, a tweet from Joe Rogan or from Elon Musk or whatever, and decided that. Uh, uh, he would throw his lot in with them. But anybody who is actually taking seriously a person who spent years telling parents of children whose bodies were so were, were show, so shot up so badly that they had trouble actually being able to look at the remains. I don't want to get in, I don't want to get any more graphic than that. You can just imagine. Uh, what bullets that explode inside a human face, inside a human child's face, you can just imagine what that face looks like. And that's that's what Alex Jones was saying never actually happened. You know, people talk about climate denial and Holocaust denial. How about child murder denial? He's a child murder denier who's now endorsing Pierre Polyev. Good luck with that, PP. Mm. What does that say? Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, from from the outside looking in, uh, you know, your history of political messaging um, at the highest level um, and endorsements as you understand them. What is an endorsement from that gentleman specifically, but that community of let's just call it, you know, in self fanatics? Yeah. Um, what does that do in your mind? Like, you know, do we, are there still things that you see like that as a political veteran, as a media veteran where you go? I don't recognize this. Like this is crazy. Well, there's certain endorsements I wouldn't want, and I, I don't want the I don't want the freak show um, endorsement. I don't want I don't want endorsements from deranged people because if I'm running for office and I need to get you know 35 40 percent of the the vote, I want as many mainstream people as possible. I'm not looking for nut jobs. Pierre Polyev and, and some others uh, have decided over the last number of years that. They want to pander to, they want to cater to, they want to do room service uh, for nut jobs. Uh, and the polls would indicate that, you know, he's doing okay with that. You know, he's ahead 10 points, 15 points, depending on where you look. But when you look at the fact that you've had a prime minister who's been in there for a decade, a toaster would be 10 or 15 points ahead at this point. And it doesn't matter anyway, because the campaign isn't on. Everything changes when the campaign's on. I mean, Aaron O'Toole, for a while, the guy who now wants to blame the uh, the Chinese communist for the fact that he was a boring, horrible campaigner uh, who, who basically shot his face off by being on all sides of the gun issue in places like Toronto. is a, a, a 905-er, you know, playing with guns. Hey, Aaron, Toronto's not Red Deer. Got it? Get it? Uh, oh, well, let's blame the Chinese communists. And in any case, um, Aaron O'Toole, as boring as he is, if he were still the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, would still be substantially ahead. 
he would be, I guarantee you, 10 points ahead of Trudeau right now. You know what uh, Graves said, Frankie Graves? Yeah. Uh, Ecos? Yeah. He's like, I've been, and he's releasing the, he's going to be on the show next week. He's, I'm releasing some modeling, totally unbiased. He's like, he gives Pierre, you know, he had a 20 point lead a couple of weeks ago. He gives him a 50 50 chance of winning at this point. And I, well, I looked at a couple of polls and you looked at some of the demographics of those polls and say what you want about the polls. I look at demographics, some of the inside mm-hmm. information, right? Yeah. And um, he's, he's underwater in terms of likability he's underwater and in the and you know what he peaked early and that's one of those things that everybody said i think you said it and kinsella said it a little while ago too um and an endorsement like that to me i was thinking about it last night i'm like that's the kind of stuff that when canadians see it because we have this like abrasion to a lot of american things specifically you know there's a centerpiece to canadian humanity that's like hey yeah, yeah, look, we're not interested in that shit, right? So, I mean, it's this this to me is one of those things could be, be like, okay, you can point in a timeline about when things started to go really bad for that gentleman, and you can do it with Aaron O'Toole that you're bringing up because Frank said at this time in the last election cycle, Aaron O'Toole had basically the exact same lead that Pierre Polyev has yeah. now, and he got skunked. Well, yeah, but what matters what matters is showtime. You know, what matters is what happens on the debate stage. You know, so Justin Trudeau's 10 points, 15 points, but who cares? It's the exhibition season. It's preseason. Who, who, who cares? Does any, you know, if you, if you like uh, the Canadian football league, do you pay attention to who is winning in, in preseason? Uh, do you pay attention if you like the NHL, you know, and, you know, who, who's winning or losing in preseason games? I love baseball. I mean, uh, I watch the occasional, uh, you know, spring training game, but I don't, I don't take whatever's happening in spring training seriously. They're just training. It, 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 it doesn't matter. So this is just, these are just training days. We'll see what happens when there's a real campaign. And when Justin Trudeau takes the stage, and the first stage he takes in a debate with anybody, including Pierre Polyev, is the French stage. And in Quebec, on that stage, Justin Trudeau will clock him. Because Justin Trudeau just happens to be a lot better in French than he is in English. It doesn't really matter. I guess he thinks in French. He's got, he's just got great skills in French. He's okay in English, but he's incredible in French. And he will clock uh, Pierre Polyev just as he clocked Mulcair and Harper. Justin Trudeau on the French stage is an alpha. And so, yes, after he clocks him in French, much of that will be translated. And many people in Canada, especially in Ontario, which matters a lot, Ontario will look at that and go, oh, wait a minute. Pierre, Pierre Polyev, and yeah, in the polls, he may be 10 or 15 points ahead, but he sure didn't look like he was 10 or 15 points ahead. As a matter of fact, Trudeau looked on the French stage like he was 10 or 15 points ahead of him. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's always the game changer. So, you know, to 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 make the point in April of uh, 2024, that somehow whatever polls we're looking at right now, whatever the demographics are in whatever part of the country that we're in, uh, to to say that the the poll in April of 2024 is going to matter a hill of beans in October of 2025. I'm sorry. I've lived too long, man. That's just stupid. Yeah. It's stupid. Yeah, but they've they've somehow convinced everybody that the election is now like the fever pitch of people going. Those polls don't matter. Yes, they matter. Here's a screenshot of another poll. Here you go, You know, and I watch these people do it, and I, and and of course, like seventy five percent of it is just bots and trolls and marketing on behalf of different political organizations, right? But the other part of it is is like watching people get so triggered by it. Makes okay, it so let me okay let, let me let me say something that's going to piss off a lot of people in media. Please do. Many people in beat media. Many people in media are. Batshit boring, and batshit boring people, whether they're writing for papers or they're, uh, you know, doing talk shows, they love putting up graphs, they love putting up charts, they love putting up things like polls, because when you're doing all of that, when you're reading numbers, you know, like you're the weather girl and you're reading numbers, well, we got a, you know, we got a, we got a high over Selkirk, uh, you know, we got partly cloudy skies over Churchill. Uh, we, it looks like we've got a tornado coming through and, and, you know, somewhere in Southwestern Ontario, you know, and uh, here, here's the chart. Here's a, you know, anybody, I'm not saying anybody, 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 but most people with a modicum of talent can do that. 
-hmm. but only people with bushels of talent become names, become big brands. So if you're not a big brand, if you're just a little generic brand, let's talk about the polls. Let's get people's attention with the polls. Let's get people's attention with a whole lot of factoids about a whole lot of public policy things that nobody really cares about. All I'm trying to say here is the reason you've got all of this boring commentary is because you've got people without personalities loading up the screens, loading up radio, loading up television, loading up the newspaper. And when you've got no personality, when you have no excitement factor, mm. when you have no brand, you can try to cover with polls and charts. But how much do they matter at the end of the trail when it really is showtime? Zero. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Do you think Pierre even, I, I have a hard time imagining him showing up for a debate against Justin Trudeau. Well, no, he'll, he'll, he'll show up. He'll show up with this BS talking points. There's nothing, there's nothing lamer than I'm going to ax the tax and end crime. I'm going to arrest criminals. Did you get to just stand there and go after eight years of you? And that'll be the answer to everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, after eight years of you, we got this. Is that is that all? Because I can't see yeah. him on a debate stage being salient. I I can't, and and I haven't really even seen him debate. I've seen him debate once. And when you watch Justin Trudeau debate, say what you want about the man, say what you want about uh, the party, say what you want about your allegiances. He's real good. Like, and I can't speak French. You can understand French, but I can read body language with the best of them. And there's a serious shift in confidence when that dude's speaking French, right? Well, the, the, one, one of the things that happens to him in English, fortunately for him in campaigns, is he gets the momentum in Quebec. You know, he wins the debate there, and then he, you know, gets, uh, you know, barrels of confidence going into the next one. But what those French debates do, what's most important uh, for the Liberal Party and for, for Justin Trudeau, is they reset everything. They reset expectations. And so for people who expect Polyev to blow Justin Trudeau away and the opposite happens, it just, it, it, it forces people, uh, you know, to, to question all of these expectations that are set, as I say, by mediocre people who have nothing else to offer. All these mediocre people should definitely keep the pollsters in their Christmas card lists. Yeah. You're because talking about lobbyists? Is that what you're talking about? Well, all, all of them. You know, the, the, the pollsters are giving them grist for the mill. Yeah. The pollsters are giving them something that, gives these people the impression that the public out there will be really interested in this shock poll. Probably have up by 14 points. <laughs> write this, write this, this, everybody's going to get so upset and so angry and so excited. Yeah, they know, dude, everybody knows. Can I ask you a question about pollsters and lobbyists real quick? I, sure. I won't take up a bunch of your time. I know we're going to go. We want to no. keep this about half an hour and uh, you're very busy. But let, let me ask you a question about pollsters. Are any of them in the pockets or any of their bias, like in your experience, are there are there pollsters who you're like, that's that's clearly a biased poll? No, no. They, they, uh, there are only a few pollsters I pay attention to. You know, I pay attention to Ipsos, Abacus, and... Uh, uh, Ecos? Uh, Ecos, uh, to some extent. Uh, depends, Nanos. Uh, depends on the day. Nanos. Uh, every, 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 every pollster sounds like they're from ancient Greece. It's like Socrates sent us these pollsters. Ecus, Nanus, Abacus. Anyway, yeah, the point Latin, is very Latin, the, the, right? The point the point is those are the uh you know there's there's three or four that I, I pay attention to. And they're all about the same. And they, the, the, I mean uh, you know if, if if someone says to me, hey Abacus has Polyev up by 14 points, but Nanus only has Nanos only has him up by 12 points. It's the same thing. Yeah, but does anybody like, dude, I was talking to someone the other day about polling and yeah. they're like, yeah, my, my landline and sometimes my cell phone will get these phone calls. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not interested. And this guy's yeah. pretty progressive, but he's conservative leaning financially, fiscally. Right. <clears throat> then I got another friend who's like a card carrying conservative wacko. And he's like, yeah, I, I love those. Anytime someone polling company calls me, I answer and I give it to him and I tell him exactly. What I, and I'm and for a second, it was like this micro study in my mind. I'm like, Oh, that's why he pulls higher because psychos like to have 20 minute phone calls with strangers in the middle of the day because they have a favorite politician. I don't know. I, I, maybe, maybe. Yeah, it's got to be it. It's got to be it. Just, like, I just, I just, like, I just, no, normal I, people are like, why would I spend 20 minutes giving you free data? Like, oh, you're crazy. But the conservative psychos are like, 
yeah, I'm ready for this. Let's do a free poll for you because I want my guy to win so bad and because it's really important to me. But generally speaking, to your point, you know, the people that are down at the bowling alley that are conservatives, same thing with progressives. No one's answering that phone. No one's going, I can't wait. I got an yeah, abacus uh, survey in my and, email and, box. I'm going to fill it out when I get home. And most important, the people at the bowling alley, whether they're liberals or conservative or NDP or whatever, are normal people. Yeah. They're not looking for someone to bash the hell out of one. And the, the, the most important, they're not, they're not into listening to stupid slogans. Ax the tax, ax the tax. And the moment someone is doing that to me, it's just, it's just a, it's just a, it's like a cheesy infomercial. Yeah. That's, that's, but that's, oh, dude, that's what I'm saying. That's all they are. A cheesy infomercial yeah. for money and for anger. That's all this conservative ax the tax bullshit movement is across the country. It's just like, how do we get as many crazy, angry people, as crazy, angry as we can get them? And how do we well, tell them that if we, if we do, they don't give us all of their stuff, their life is over. I mean, they want, they want, look, they want crazy, angry people to give them money every single month. I mean, that's yeah. what they do. They get your visa number, your, you know, whatever your ATM number, and they want you to donate every single month and they'll fill your, your, your mailbox, your conventional mailbox, your snail mailbox, you know, they'll, they'll fill it with all kinds of brochures uh, telling you about how the world is coming to an end because of Justin Trudeau. They'll also fill your email inbox with that stuff. And all of it is about collecting money. So a relatively tiny percentage, it's in the single digits, a tiny percentage of Canadians donates to the political party. And so the political party spends a whole lot of time aiming its message at three or four or five percent of Canadians that will send the money. It's mm. It's about it's about it's about the dough because if you can if you can raise a ton of dough, which the conservatives yeah. always do, you can run a lot of uh, negative ads during hockey games, uh, you know, during the uh, during the election campaign. You know, Justin's not ready. Justin's not ready, or whatever. This this time it'll be you know Justin. Justin caused the the, the price here. Your 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 BL There's a Sharknado well. coming if you don't vote for me. All, all that stuff, and and so so you need all of this money that you're raising from the rubes in order to buy those ads and hopefully uh, the, for you, the, those ads will, will make a difference, but we just don't know. Yeah. All bets are off until the game is on. And so when people ask the question, you know, these professional bonds, when is Trudeau going to walk in the, walk in the snow or take a walk in the snow? When is he going to go away? When will, when will he read the tea leaves? When will he take the polls serious? If Trudeau was any of those things, if Trudeau was just a, a, a paranoid, a little talentless dweeb, Okay, if that's all he was, he never would have gotten into the game in the first place. You know, he's a pro, he's a rock star, he's not an idiot. Uh, he is not trying to make your life more expensive. He's not trying to destroy the Alberta energy industry. I don't want to get into this too deeply, but the energy industry in Alberta has never made more money than it's making right now. But for years, the message in Alberta has been and still is that Trudeau is trying to turn off the tap. Trudeau is, is trying to starve Alberta. Why would Trudeau want to starve the golden goose? Does he not want that revenue for all the social programs and all the other programs? He wants to grow it. Yeah. He wants to grow the revenue by adding right. renewables out there and giving people grants and saying, hey, we'll give you billions if you do windmill farms. They're like, we don't even we don't even know what those look like. Donald Trump said they kill whales, so we're not going to do those. The other day, the ministers in, in the Alberta government were on Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. They're on Facebook. They're on social media. Oh, Brian uh, Jean. Yeah, yeah. Brian Jean, one of them, yeah. touting that the Trans Mountain Pipeline is now complete. And so Alberta bitumen will be going uh, to British Columbia. They've twinned the pipeline. Never mentioned where the money was coming from. Mm -hmm. Never mentioned that the pipeline was bought because of a federal government decision made by Justin Trudeau. Because, of course, if he told the truth about that, if he said, thank you, Prime Minister Trudeau, if he did something like that, he would be he he would get barbecued by the uh, the usual lynch mob types. It's crazy, dude. I love politics. Sometimes, generally speaking, it makes me sick. Like you know, and that's why I want to have these conversations. Well, as long as, as long as we have these conversations and in an irreverent, yeah, truthful way, it's just uh, I just, I just don't want to have like I say those those conversations uh, that are done by the the lobbyists doing their 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 play fighting, if you will. Uh, with, with all the jargon, taking everything literally and seriously. Yeah. Anyone who takes political rhetoric literally and seriously, it's trouble. Well, they just they 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 have other issues. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, welcome to 2024. Uh, my friend Charles Adler, before I let you go, uh, you know, while we've been talking about really dumb premiers, uh, and we have several of them in this country, I, I, I dude, Doug Ford gets honorable mention. Uh, just a quick clip here, real quick. This is him announcing that he wants... <laughs> This is, by the way, I live in Ontario, so I can't throw stones at other people's premiers. We have, and I'll prove it out here, the dumbest. Um, yesterday, he's like, hey, listen, everybody, we're going to just have Ontario students in medical schools. And everybody's like, what the fuck are you talking about? But that wasn't the best part. doesn't matter. The best part was him asking, where's lunch? We're holding a party for lunch after that. <laughs> 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 he is, you know, I, I, I hate, I, I got to say this. I, I, I noticed I, we're hosting a party for lunch after this. Yeah, okay, so, okay, we, we, we know, we'll stipulate. He's not Albert Einstein, okay? <laughs> he's a doofus. But he's, he's a relatively lovable. <laughs> Doofus. It's like every family in Ontario has a Doug Ford in their family. <laughs> you really, I mean, you know, I know the people who are not fans of Ford and not conservative and they don't like to hear this, but he really, just look at him. I mean, yeah. everyone, every, at, at every Christmas, there's always a Doug Ford <laughs> guy, kind of guy at the table, and they always seem relatively harmless. <laughs> Until you get up from that table after dinner and your wallet's gone and your wife's pregnant. <laughs> but, dude, look at him. Like, I mean, he's three feet away from the microphone. He's got this, this look on his face. He's, like, yeah. not sure what's happening. And the yeah. only thing he's concerned about is where are we having lunch? Look, yeah. at, look at him. <laughs> look at him. I noticed we're holding a party for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, dude, it's like we uh, we're at that time where we are legitimately being <laughs> being run and managed by the people we used to mock in high school. Yeah, like, I, know, I mean, but as, as you know, I love this country. Yeah. And one of the things I love and for all these idiots who don't think it's a free country. Oh, really? Then why are we getting away with saying all the stuff we're saying? Because it's not a free country. Anyway, yeah. uh, I, I love this free country that we live in where we don't suck up. <laughs> to the premier or the prime minister or the opposition leader uh, where we know that despite the fact that, you know, doofus is in that particular job, yeah. there are a whole lot of professionals all over, in this case it would be Ontario, all over Ontario who are extremely productive. They're putting food on the table. They're putting food on your table and your kid's yeah. table and things are happening. They don't really care who the premier is and Fortunately, because of the system that we have, despite the fact that the Pierre Polyevs come along every now and then and try to pretend that Justin Trudeau is managing everything, Justin Trudeau is manipulating uh, food prices, gas prices, blah, 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 blah. Most of us know better. And we live in a country where even if the premier is not Albert Einstein, we'll, we'll do just fine. I know. I appreciate you. Charles Adler, the podcast, Charles Adler podcast, go and download, subscribe anywhere you get your fine podcasts. Uh, Charles is, uh, the conscience of most people, uh, and one of my very good friends and he's my mentor and, uh, I want to know how stuff works next week. Can we find out how lobbying works in this country? Big dark hole there. We no can, one we, seems to know it. We can, we can do a little something on, on that. Uh, yeah. by the way, uh, I, I don't just love all Canadians who watch and listen to this. I love you because without you, this isn't uh, possible. Yes. I'm, I'm as irreverent as the day is long. But uh, Dean Blundell is one of the real creators in this country. And Dean Blundell is uh, one of the people in this country who's giving a chance, an opportunity uh, to a lot of people. Uh, Dean Blundell has enough talent in his genes uh, to do none of this and to make a whole lot of money doing things which require a whole lot less patience and a whole lot less effort. But he does the, he does the heavy lifting because he's committed to public communications. He is the quintessential public communicator. And why does he make it look easy? Because he's so goddamn good at it. Oh, Charles, you're, I'm just good at it because I watched you do it for 20 years from across the hall, buddy. Thank you very much. You're so nice, Mr. Adler. We'll talk to you soon. Charles Adler, ladies and gentlemen, at Charles Adler on Twitter is where you can find him. This is one of the best people I know, legitimately. We had a ton of issues in our company this year, to no fault of our own, to be honest with you.
And that man has stuck with me, stuck with us. That man has been nothing but patient, kind, loving, helpful, helping us, helping us see differently, look at things differently. He's changed my perspective when it comes to politics. It's why we can kind of joke around about it. Let me tell you something, friends. This Alex Jones thing, that, that is not going to help Mr. Polyev. If you're one of those people, it's like, it's over. It's going to win. I don't think so. I, and if he, even if he does, I mean, four years of content for me. I, I'm not complaining if we have a Pierre Polyev government. Do you know how many sound bites we'll get from that guy at, like, state dinners? Or he may or may not be absolutely hammered? Probably a few. Like, I mean, hammed. Do you know how not smart he is and all the dumb shit he says now? Can you imagine that on a global stage? Oh, my God. Is it embarrassing for us? Kind of like Trump was embarrassing for the United States? Uh Uh-huh. But it was a big time for clicks. We're in the business of clicks. So a pair poly of government for a business like us Not a bad thing. And you'd be right to consider that to be very amoral on my part. (laughs) But I'm telling you, the dude's going to lose. He's just too angry all the time. He's too much of a dick. It's kind of the bottom line. Like Canadians are not unlike Americans, but you know that American hubris? That the the pee pee stuff, you know the 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 hypotheticals making you live in a hypothetical situation and telling you he's the martyr, he's the answer, all that other shit. No one's better than him, and just the angry shit. Like yesterday, you went after this guy named Charlie Angus, twenty year veteran of politics, really good dude. Say what you want about who he worked for, doesn't matter. He's an NDP dude, really good politician, good guy. Actually, one of the only good ones. Pierre just carved him on his last day. Basically called him a piece of shit. So here's the thing. Canadians are not like that, generally speaking. The heartbeat of Canadians aren't like that. The centerpiece of Canada is not like that. It's not. The centerpiece of Canadiana are people who do not do that, who do not lead with ego. Canadians are absolutely united around that identity. We're not dicks. Pierre Polyev is just a dick. That's all he is. He's never an academic. He's never a socially responsible human being. He is always angry. Everything he says and does is designed to make people angry so that he can, like say, line up behind me. Everybody's angry back here, too. No solutions to policy, no foreign policy, no nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm not talking about Justin Trudeau. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about that culture of anger not being welcomed in Canada over a prolonged period of time. Hey, is it fun to, you know, give it a rim job, play with like fascism, anger? For a bit, depending on how resentful you are and how angry you are, for sure it is. is Everybody's like misery loves company. Life's a cliche that way. But it's not a sustainable feeling, anger, generally speaking, like absolutely unsustainable. People go crazy before they stop being angry. And the only choice for you to be angry is to stop being angry, but not being angry. And Pierre Polyev farms anger. That's his commodity. Kind of like Jeff Bezos's commodity is saving everybody time. He monetized time. Pierre Polyev is legitimately monetizing anger in this country. And Canada is not an angry country. We got a lot of angry people but they're being told they're angry and they're being told they have to be angry. And then that anger then leads to them giving him money because, Hey, we're angry too. And I'm the leader of the angry train and get behind me because I'm the vanguard of angry and I'm going to make us angry enough that we're going to change this country. No, uh, -uh. Canada is not like that. Just not. It isn't. Yeah. We've all got different perspectives and views and, Sure, you can be left. I guess you can be right. If you identify in either of those capacities publicly, you're just a base human being. By the way, I'm a liberal. I'm a conservative. Oh, really? So you just adopted their ideology and you just kind of work it? <laughs> no, so you do? What about your thoughts? What about how you feel? 
Anyway, that was a fun little spin with Charlie. Some light on Pierre Polyev. Hey, everybody. Vote for character. Try that for a change. Because PP has none of it. Zero character. Zero depth. He's not an intellectual. He is not a smart man. Uh, he is an absolute authoritarian. He is an emotional basket case. I think you want to maybe look into his, uh, the way he copes in private. It's another thing you probably want to look into. You probably walk in a little, maybe look into why he hasn't sat for a background check. You probably also want to look into who his extended family is. And you probably don't want that guy. Like, I mean, if it's one thing, right? If he's just an emotional dick and he's running around being angry and you're like, oh, he's just uh, copying the Trump playbook. And you're like, we can't have an angry prime minister. What about all the other stuff? What about all the foreign interference stuff? What about the CSIS investigation into his party? His relationship with the government of India who assassinated a Canadian who the conservatives don't like. What about that? I mean, I can give you a hundred reasons if you like to never let that guy near your bank account, your children, or anything that you find valuable in your life, like your brain or your vote. Man, you guys, I'll tell you one thing before I go, and this is the truth. And this is something you. All of us, not you, all of us need to remember. Works, not words. There are no receipts for words. There are for works. Remember that every single time you go into an election cycle, every single time you buy something, every single time you trust anybody with anything that's yours, specifically your agency, whoever you give that agency to, whoever you give your vote to, whoever you give your money to, Really good idea to make sure that that person, that brand, that company's words match their works. Okay. Have a great day, everybody. Great weekend. Thanks to Charlie for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Charles Adler's podcast, anywhere you get your fine podcast. Uh, as always, we're brought to you by my friends at Cantorque, makers of rugged, hardworking torque wrenches. Uh, Canada's leading industrial tool experts. Uh, the best in sales service rentals, calibration, maintenance, and custom fabrication of industrial torque tools for heavy industry around the world. Uh, these guys are the best. Colin is the king. He's got a great podcast. Saw a video of one that he did yesterday with his green screen. It's called the Talking Torque Podcast. If you like racing, uh, if you like learning about tools, if you like learning about torque wrenches, I mean, this is part of his business, so he loves talking about it. Great podcast. You can also check out his podcast and all of his products and services at cantorque.com. He's got a brand new website. Uh, tool rentals, calibration service, repairs to custom fabrication and distribution opportunities. Cantorque offers a complete range of services and products making them your one-stop destination for all your bolting needs, uh, saving you time, effort, and hassle. Uh, they've been doing it for 20 years. Uh, they'll do it for you. They're in Edmonton, uh, Alberta, and uh, they manufacture everything in this beautiful country. Very few people do that, but they're proud of the workmanship, proud of the people, and they showcase it with a maple leaf on every single torque wrench they put out. Product services, everything about them. Go to cantorque.com for more details. Uh, we're also brought to you by factcheck.io. Uh, this is software and a group of people who said, you know what? bleep it i believe they even said bleep it not a lot of swears in that group which is you know and i'm happy to be working with them i would appreciate it if they would swear more they just don't factcheck.io is software that kills disinformation and disinformation and provides you with the source of where it came from the epistemology of misinformation and disinformation where do you point the finger who did what how do you surmise intention in the post-truth digital age, the good people at factcheck.io figured it out. Uh, their beta test is unbelievable. It's open to you now. You can go and join it. Go to F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io. F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io. Factcheck.io. Again, disinformation killing software. Accepting beta testers right now. You can apply to become a verified fact checker as well. Uh, and this thing is going to be launching, I think, in the next two to three months. Uh, their prototype is absolutely robust. You get a full report of where that information came from. Bots, trolls, who, where, what, why, and intention. Did I mention that? 
Yeah, then you can decide whether or not you want to believe it. That's incredible stuff. Again, agency, such an awesome word. Also brought to you by our partners over at Rome Auto, car subscription company. They don't sell cars. They subscribe cars. They subscribe them to you. Uh, and in that one payment, you get insurance, routine maintenance, roadside assistance. Drive your own car on your own terms with a car subscription from Rome. And right now you get $150 off with promo code Rome with Dean, R O A M. Rome with Dean. And again, you go to Rome.auto, punch that in, you'll get $150 off your first month's payment. Uh, as seen on CBC, Blog TO, Yahoo Finance as well, 4.9 stars out of Google. Everybody's happy that gets a car subscription because you're not out of pocket big time up front. Uh, there's no onerous payment for seven years. And the amazing part about this company is they're in the GTA now. That's right. They're in the greater Toronto area. So if you're looking for a car for short term, long term, you're not interested in dicking around with insurance, routine maintenance and roadside assistance. Everything is included, including Wi-Fi. I'm driving a car right now from these guys. I'm a customer. Wi-Fi in it. It's incredible. Uh, go to Rome.auto and get yours today. Ah. And last but not least, uh, please download the Muse um, on the Mic podcast, please. These girls are incredible. Uh, one of my favorite new podcasts, and it's available at Cryer Media. You go to Cryer.co and you can get it today. Uh, the Muse, Muse on the Mic podcast is uh, by Emily and Riley. Emily and Riley host. They're also the owners of Muse Massage Spa, 1290 Finch Avenue West, Unit 13, Toronto, Ontario. Go to Muse Massage Spa for more details. But listen, they're sexologists, they're educators, and they're advocates for sex work. And they own a body rub parlor. It's the best one in Canada. I can guarantee you that. Uh, and if you're in the Toronto area, and if you would like to go, they've got a deal for everybody. Just uh, get in touch with the ladies at Muse, Emily or Riley. Tell them you want the Dean special. They'll know what that means. Uh, MuseMassageSpa.com. Go and book your appointment today. Check out your Muses, but more importantly, download and subscribe to their Patreon version of their podcast, Muse on the Mic, as well as YouTube. You can get them at Cryer Media. And anywhere you get your fine podcasts, musemassagespa.com. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks to Charlie for being here. Thank you for being here. Uh, greatly appreciate your time. Greatly appreciate you giving it to us. Have an excellent weekend. Um, what are your plans? I don't have any. Mm, no, that's not true. I got to go to a meeting today, and then I got another meeting this afternoon. Maybe another podcast this afternoon. Who knows? I mean, the world's my oyster. Come and go as I please. Autonomy. It's amazing. Have a great day, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.